Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mimi, I'm a professional dancer and musical theatre performer based in London. And today I'm gonna to be talking all about the essentials that you need for going to dance college. This will be part of my back to school series, which I will be doing every week in August for all of the new performing arts students entering vocational training this year. And every year, I actually graduated in 2020, so I don't actually go to college anymore, so. This video could have been a lot more fun to make at college. I wish I had the balls to actually start a YouTube channel while I was at college. I did think about it, but I just didn't have the balls to do it. But anyway, I digress. Yeah, so I don't go to college, but obviously I trained for three years, so I know exactly what you need to bring with you. Aside from the obvious things, this is going to be like a good list. And I've categorized it into physical things that you need to bring and mindset things that you need to bring. <laughs> Or mindsets, shall we say. Mindsets that you need to bring. God, why Why has it always got to be so hard? Also, some of these things on the list I didn't take or didn't use or didn't have at the time. So it would have helped me if I did have that. Be sure to hit the subscribe button if you like dance and industry related content. That's what I do. You can also follow me on TikTok and Instagram. Everything will be linked below. But yeah, okay, enough of that. Let's get onto this list. Okay guys, so physical essentials, things that you physically need to bring with you to survive college, okay? And some of these are no-brainers, but obviously, you know, some of these things I didn't actually take with me, so there's that. I'm not going to disclose which ones, actually no, I probably will. Okay, so number one, folders and lots of them okay throughout college you get given a whole lot of loose paper like sheet music scripts audition signs like just even just letters and things like you just get loads of random bits of paper and you just need a place to put them because leaving them loose they just go everywhere and the thing is i actually had folders but also if you have folders actually put it in the folder <laughs> it can get really stressful actually when you when you do that sometimes especially when you progress like into your second and third year so just get folders poly poly pockets or plastic sleeves whatever you call them when i first had someone call it a poly pocket i was like Poly. Get the plastic sleeves, you know, that go with it. They're really cheap. You can just throw it into the folder. I would recommend getting a folder for all of your rep. When I was at college, I taped all of my sheet music and like put it into like plastic sleeves. But you can also get a display book for your music, which is a lot easier if you don't want to go through the hassle of taping all of your music together. You can get a display book, which is quite good. It's kind of already got the plastic sleeves in it. So you can kind of just slot your pages straight into it. It's a little bit easier that way. Also get a lever arch file, get a lever arch file because you will get written work if you're doing like a BA course. Um, I did a diploma, but I still had to have like a really big ass folder um, just for all of the paperwork that I was doing and all of the written stuff. So get a lever arch file because it can just take a lot more than like your standard like little file. Just, just have lots of folders, keep organized with all of your sheets that you'll be given because honestly it can get so stressful when you don't have stuff. And also like if you actually have that in one place, like when you go out into the world, you can actually kind of use that stuff. Like I actually still use a lot of stuff that I did at college, so something to think about. Get a diary. Okay, this is something I didn't use while I was at college. I had a wall calendar that I used, but I kind of just did like big events that were kind of on there. I didn't put, like use it to like mark out my deadlines or kind of plan out when I was gonna do practice this or, do you know what I mean? I could have like managed my time a lot better if I just had a diary and it like marked down all of the deadlines that I had when I needed to learn a certain song by or a script or like, do you know what I mean? There, there just is like lots of little things that come up and if you have a diary, you can really like plan it in and get everything done when you need to. It's a lot less stressful because I was kind of like winging it, kind of estimating when the deadlines were and then like, just being like shit, myself. <laughs> so don't do that, get a diary. Now that I'm like out in the world from college, I use, I can't live without my diary. Like honestly, I don't leave the house without it because if someone asks me if I'm free on a certain day, I will have a meltdown because I don't know. I have 
no idea anymore what days I'm free. It literally has to be booked in, so it's like, it's one of these things, okay? Get a diary. And also, it kind of gets you into the habit of using a diary and planning, and it's, it's all good habits, it's all good habits. A big ass water bottle, okay? <laughs> you need a big water bottle because I drank so much water in the day, and even like the chili bottles that you can get, that would be gone halfway through a lesson you know like especially if the water was like nice and cold that would be gone i would highly recommend getting a big water bottle or even the chili does do like the big ones they are quite expensive though but i would recommend a big water bottle because the amount of times i had to refill my water bottle and there would be a queue at the water fountain you'd be late for your lesson just get a big water bottle saved my life i drank so much water lunchbox and tupperwares not a lot of colleges uh, will have a cafe or will provide food for you, so you will have to like sort your own food. This is a bit of a no-brainer. Again, not gonna say that much. I had a really basic like single Tupperware one that was really cheap, but like other people have these really cool like little bento box ones where you can kind of like proportionize your food and stuff, so whatever floats your boat, but just get some Tupperwares, okay? Okay, hair care products. At dance college, you know, I was scraping my hair back into a ballet bun and then taking it out and then putting it half up, half down for a jazz class because I had to look a certain way and then, like, I would literally be pulling it out and some, the amount of times, especially because of the sweat and how much I was, like, flinging my head around, my hair would get knotted into the hairband and I'd be pulling it out and hair would get ripped from my scalp. That would happen so often and, like, just because of the amount of sweat and, like, the hairspray in my hair. I was using a lot of heat as well, and I wasn't using heat protector spray. Okay, so this is what is I'm going to lead into. Please invest in some really good products to look after your hair after what it goes through during the day. Argan oil, I leave, use leave-in conditioner by Aussie, that's pretty good. Super milk from Lush, that is like the best leave-in conditioner that I've used. Heat protector spray. I can't stress this enough guys, heat protector spray. Do not fry your hair, I was frying mine for years. Actually a lot of these things I didn't do. <laughs> it's amazing how, much, how well I survived. Hair styling tools, not gonna say much about this. You're gonna have to do a lot of hairstyles in your time there. There's a lot of shows, showcases, little mini performances that you have to do and everyone likes to get all done up and it's worth investing in hair extensions like those little clip-in ones that you can get like Lullabells is quite good or the I'm pretty sure there's the Beauty Works ones are pretty good as well. Straighteners, curlers, blow dryers. If you have a Dyson air wrap how does it feel being God's favorite? But also bring that, well done. You're probably going to suffer a lot less if you have one of those. Yeah, hair styling tools, you will need them, bring them. Oh, do you know what? Okay, I'm gonna say this one. I was gonna leave it off, but I've got Sport Fix setting spray. And I swore by this for years. But I, I recent, literally last week, I went to a dance intensive, like a mentor program for three days. And there was a makeup tutorial for castings to do good makeup for a casting. This is probably not it guys, I'm not gonna lie. She said that setting spray doesn't do anything. Like, and this is like a professional makeup artist. She was like, setting spray doesn't do anything. It's a scam. She was like, what you need to invest in is a really good primer, okay? She recommended Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer, okay? That's the best one she's used. I haven't got it yet, because your girl is broke, but... Uh <laughs> skincare! You really don't need to be doing this whole 12-step nonsense. I was doing that. I was doing that while I was at college, and my skin absolutely broke out in my second year. I had this awful breakout on my face. Like it was, I've never had so many spots in my life. It was really bad and I was doing this 12 steps and I was like, I don't know what's going on. And then as soon as I just stripped it right back and I just went to a simple cleanse, tone, moisturize, it all changed. Cause you're really going through a lot in the day. There's, 
you're putting on makeup, you're sweating, you're drying off, you're sweating, you're drying off, you're in contact, like you're probably rubbing your face on the floor when you're rolling around in contemporary, like, do you know what I mean? You're just coming into contact with all these things and your skin is going through so much. And then if you're just like bombarding it with all these chemicals at the end, it just seems very counterproductive, especially as someone with sensitive skin, you really don't need to be doing the whole 12 step thing. And you probably won't be able to afford it anymore when you go there anyway. Foam rollers and a recovery kit. This is something that I got later on because other people had it. And I had no idea this was a thing until I went to college and people were had their foam rollers and were rolling out their muscles. I used other people's for, for a little bit when I was in a bit of pain with my muscles. So painful when you're rolling them out, but it's like a really good pain. I would recommend in investing in that because it's also really good at preventing injuries and getting too tight in your muscles and letting them seize up. So it's a really good way of just like getting the blood flow to your muscles when they get tight. Student and loyalty cards, okay? I don't know if every college does this, but I was able to get one while I was at college. The UK one, which was which is now Totem. At the time it was NUS, but now it's Totem. Get a student card, get loyalty cards for places. Tesco club card, get that. Going to Sainsbury's, Nectar card, Morrison's Moore card co-op, whatever shop you're going to, to get your shop, get their cards, especially Tesco, like I would highly recommend Tesco because they knock a bit of money off and the points are really good, and, like the rewards are great, so yeah, would recommend loyalty cards, it's actually going to save you a lot of money in the long run and use your, because I actually always forgot about my student card and I would walk away having paid full price for something and been like, I literally could have used my student card. So actually remember to use it as well. <laughs> knee pads, knee pads. Not gonna say a lot about this one. I didn't have knee pads at all while I was at college and the amount of times I grazed my knees in contemporary because you do like knee slides and stuff and you'd like I got so many burns and stuff on my knees and I could have prevented that if I just got knee pads. So don't be like me, save yourself the aggro get knee pads. Extra tights and leotards. Again, not gonna say a lot about this one. If you only get one pair of tights and leotard and you're dancing five days a week, you're gonna either stink or be washing that literally every night because the amount of sweat that you produce is unholy, okay? First aid and pain relief. Again, bit of a no-brainer. They do have that on site, but also have it for yourself like while you're at home. I can't tell you the amount of times I've got like headaches and stuff because you do go through a lot of college physically and like, you know, you do have like days where you feel a bit rough. So, you know, you need to have those essentials on you to give you a little pick-me-up or something that's going to just help whatever pain you're facing, headaches, stomach aches, you know, periods, girl. When we all go through our periods in ballet, that's not fun. Okay, so this one's a little bit, fun. this is a, a bonus. You don't need to get this, because I always did this as like a traditional method, a vocal steamer. But I used to just get a bowl of hot water and a towel over my head and just inhale through the nose and out through the mouth. That's how I did like a topical steam for my voice. That's how I did it, it's free. However, if you're someone who's really like passionate about it like singing is your thing and like you're like a singer singer like a, a proper singer then maybe like a vocal steamer is definitely for you have a look online there's like a little it looks like a bong <laughs> literally inhale water vapor and it's it basically hydrates your vocal cords directly so that you have a more hydrated singing voice speaking of hydration <laughs> All right, so now we're on to our mindset essential. The inner work, okay? This is something that is ongoing. This will be every single day. And you will have slip ups, you will have bad days, you will have days where you probably will talk to yourself in a not so great way. But I would say really try and focus on finding some sort of practice that grounds you. Anything for you, whether it's like just a creative little hobby that you do in the evening, like just, you know, like those zen coloring books, or if you just like to put on some music and just dance in the shower naked or meditating or doing a little stretch before bed, bit of yoga, something where you're just kind of freeing your mind, something that grounds you in the present and allowing yourself to have that space to believe in yourself. And it's really, really important that you're always checking in with yourself and putting your mental health first. Just fostering self-love for yourself and 
bringing the focus to you, your inner world, and not what other people are doing. I think doing the inner work is really focusing on, on you and having self-awareness of what you're saying to yourself and how you're talking to yourself over your journey. I think it's just having that self-awareness and doing the work to encourage yourself even when you're down, encouraging yourself, saying that today was just not the day, tomorrow's a new one, you know. The inner work is so important while you're at college because it's so easy to fall in the comparison trap. I did it all the time. Don't give in to those feelings and become despondent and become a little bit disenfranchised by it. Don't allow that to happen. Like, keep building upon your self-worth and your self-love, your self-care, all of these routines are so important. Tenacity, that kind of follows on from the inner work, okay? Like, you need to be tenacious, you need to be relentless, you know? Even if you're set back so many times at college or you're, you're being overlooked, it's having that tenacity to put yourself in those situations, put yourself at the front, have the tenacity to prove to yourself that you can do this, you know, it's it's like that relentless, you're not going to stop for that goal. And that will serve you really well in the industry because you have to be tenacious when you come out, like, because you do get knockbacks in the industry. So like, if you're getting knockbacks at college, you know, that's normal. And you have to be tenacious to just be like, well, I don't care. I'm still great. I'm still coming back at it. I'm training. I'm doing what I need to do. I'm in the right places. I'm with the right people. I'm just going to keep going. Like, it's that kind of mindset. Be tenacious. Be relentless. Don't stop. Being open-minded. Now, you need to be open-minded at college because they're going to throw a lot of stuff at you, okay? You need to be open-minded to different possibilities of what you can possibly do. Um, um, part of what I did at college was gymnastics. I never considered doing gymnastics in my life. When I was a kid I did, but like as an adult, never considered it anymore. Like never like thought to do it. And I was I was really negative about like myself because I I'd never done it before. I was like, I'm not a gymnast, I can't do this. Like, even before I'd even tried it, I was like, gymnastics, what, I can't do that? Like, I already told myself I couldn't do that. And I struggled with gymnastics for a while until I just said F it and just really tried and told myself that I could do it. And then I really started improving. And I think it's just being open-minded to the possibility. When you're so passionate about something and you know that you're good at something but you try something new and you're not good at it, it's like, oh, well I want to be good at it now. I want it now. You're not going to get it unless you work for it but you need to tell yourself you can do it. You just need to keep going and keep trying and trying until you do it. Like it's trial and error. That's ex that's that's how it works. Even when I started dancing, I wasn't a good dancer, you know? It took years for me to get to a point where I, I was a good dancer. There's a lot of people in the year probably haven't done tap before and you will definitely have to do tap at dance musical theater college so just be open-minded to the possibilities right kind of leads me into my next point which is become a chameleon okay really try and take on board what everybody is saying and really try to become adaptable um being adaptable is really really good for this industry um a lot of mentors that I've kind of been taught by in my time have said versatility is key and to not put all of your eggs in one basket and kind of train in everything. You you don't have to be amazing at everything but it's good to train in everything and being that chameleon that can kind of adapt to different environments that's going to get you booked on so many jobs you're going to get into that practice of becoming adaptable before you go out into the world and doing different styles because no job is going to be the same next one another analogy become a sponge and that is it's all kind of the same thing but becoming a sponge is really soaking up that information and taking it on board and remembering your training. When I first started, I basically, I was put in bottom set ballet, I had to basically relearn my whole ballet technique. My teacher had to keep, she was relentless, she was tenacious, she was relentless, she was like constantly at me, at me, at me, at me, but it was because I wasn't remembering the things she was telling me, I was just kind of like going through the motions to, to a certain degree. And it was only when I started sponging it and re remember sponging it and remembering the information that she'd given me and, uh, and really like 
applying all of these things. It was so much easier to self-correct. It took me like a whole term to kind of relearn that skill. Really become a sponge. Even now, when I'm dancing or when I'm singing and you know, I'm listening to myself. I really am trying to be present. Be present in what you're doing and really remember the tips and the pointers that apply to what you're specifically doing and try and apply that. There are so many times where I've been singing and I've like struggled with a note and then I've like gone back to my training, the stuff that I've really tried to soak up like a sponge and just applied when I've just been practicing by myself and it's worked. Remember your training, even though you're going, this is a video for people going into training, start getting into the habit of it. If someone's told you to do something, remember that pointer and always apply it. Organized mind, organized life, okay? You are going to need to get organized. I was reasonably organized at college. I mean, what I said earlier probably shows that I wasn't that organized, but honestly, I didn't do that badly. Like it was, I wasn't a complete disaster, but I did go through a lot of anxiety and stress because I wasn't fully on top, I kind of half assed my organization. If that makes sense, I really half assed it. Yes, I scraped it. Yes, I survived. Yes, I got good grades. Yes, I, I got things in on time by the skin of my teeth. You know, I went through a lot of anxiety because of that and it, all of that could have been avoided because I could have just been more organized, you know? I could have just I had a diary and actually written down some deadlines. <laughs> this is why getting a planner, or it doesn't have to be like a, a, a Bob standard diary if you get a planner or something like that. You can write down like a specific equipment that you're gonna need on a certain day. And I was just like, yeah, I'll remember that, cool, cool. Didn't write it down anywhere, didn't write down the day that I needed it. I, it was just all up here, right? And then it comes to the day and I haven't got it. And I'm like, oh my God. You can only imagine the panic that ensued on that day. Do you know how much stress could have been avoided? Just organized, organized mind, organized and happy life. Believe in yourself, okay? And this kind of links right back to the inner work is just really foster an environment where you believe in yourself. Even on days where you've gone down into a negative spiral and you're telling yourself this and that, try and scrape some sort of gumption to just say no to yourself. And just say no to that crap and tell yourself it's okay, today's just not the day. You, you know, like it's not that deep. It's just college. You know, when you put it into perspective like that, it really does, because when you're there, it's your bubble, it's your world, like that's it. And it doesn't feel like there's much going on outside those four walls. But when you come out of college and you realize how much you were stressing about things that really just didn't matter, it's, it's really quite mind blowing. And it's just like no point in beating yourself up if you didn't get something and like getting all down about yourself. Because I could be down about myself for like weeks you know, until something good happens and then like, and someone gives me a compliment and then finally I was like, no, like, and then I got into a mindset where I was just like, no, like, screw that. Like, I'm gonna tell myself I'm doing great because I actually got to a point where I was, actually, no, I am doing great and I don't need anyone to tell me that because I can see that for myself. You know, I look at myself in a goddamn mirror every day. <laughs> no one else is gonna believe in you like more than you can believe in yourself. Maybe your mum and dad. You can still call on them, you can still ring them, but like, ultimately they can tell you that you're great and this and that but you're just gonna be like yeah 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 you're saying that because you're my mum you need to believe in yourself point blank period there's gonna be days where it's gonna be tough I know but try and muster it out of somewhere next day is a new day move on no point in stressing about that you can't control the past you can't control the future you can control what you're doing right now new day let's get it and that concludes today's video I kind of rattled through all of those but hopefully that kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of what i did wrong um while i was at college and um how i could have avoided a whole lot of stress and maybe this would have helped a few people i'm wishing you all the best of luck on your vocational journey for the next three years or four years or however long you're going into vocational training for it's seriously a tough three years or four years but it is so rewarding at the end of it and it is worth it the training is incredible any college that you go to the training is going to be incredible you're gonna get a lot out of it okay but you need to be strong 
you need to be strong and I'm telling you this as your like big sis memes I'm telling you you need to be strong okay video thank you so much for watching if you'd like to see a little bit more of me then do follow me on my socials everything will be linked in the description and don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that you can see more of me and my content I do dance and industry related content I will be doing a few more vlogs and stuff like that this year talking a bit more about the jobs that I've done and da 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 da, -da. so yeah come and follow this channel it's fun round here. I hope I'm not too scary or intimidating. This is Mimi signing out. Thank you for tuning in today. Bye-bye, everyone.